we pray it will not just be a theoretical topic for us, but it will be something that our faith will increase from week to week in Jesus' name. Glory be to your holy name, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Now, in the short time I have before me, we're going back to Hebrews chapter 11. Because if there's any chapter that we should understand in the Bible, I believe that it should be Hebrews chapter 11. Um, it should be Hebrews chapter 11. If you had to pick one chapter that will enrich you as a Christian, it has to be Hebrews chapter 11. Now, we're going to Hebrews chapter 11. And uh, just to recap about when we started the series, we looked at the key thing to take away was uh, just one word, consider. And we said that from week to week, from day to day, um, the quality of our lives will be, it will be controlled by that word consider. What you choose to consider and what you choose not to consider to a great extent will determine the quality of your faith. And we've seen people like Abraham that decided not to consider the facts. He had the fact that his body was dead, his wife's womb was dead, but he chose not to consider. And that's how he, went from, uh, he developed his great faith. And my brother, that's the only way we can develop our great faith is by, you know, what, controlling what we consider. The, the facts are there. You know, you go out every, any day, there will be things that will depress you. There will be things that will, you know, confuse you. There will be things that will discourage you. But it's what you choose to consider. Whether you choose to consider those things or not, that will have an effect on the quality of your life uh, because it will have an effect on the quality of your faith. So we have to be consciously decide and become masters of what we choose to consider and what we choose not to consider. On the positive side, we must consider what God has said, his promises, his power, and uh, he, the, the ability, I can even raise the dead. There's nothing that he cannot do. On the other hand, we shouldn't consider anything that negates a, that promise of God in our lives. But a note of caution here, you see people take that to the extreme, and you have people that, you know, uh, you must have come across Christians like that, that everybody will be counseling them, you know, the, the pastor will become everybody, the, even the scriptures will open it to them, they'll say, no, I've made up my mind, and I'm choosing not to consider what anybody is telling me. I will say, brother, you are heading towards a ditch. Sister, watch out, there's trouble ahead. No, I will not consider anything. Well, that is not what we're talking about, that is just, as a foolishness, is it? But you know, as wise people of God, I know you understand what I'm trying to say. There are times when your own body, you choose not to consider it. Your own body, you choose not to consider it. And all the bad things around you, you choose not to consider them. And there's always something good to focus on. No matter what has gone on, Joseph in the prison had things that, you know, he, he, if, he if he considered his life, you know, he would, have, he would have dried up. But there were some positive things that he could consider. He, he found something, even in the prison, that he could consider, and that was how he, his, his life, he met, was able to maintain his faith. Uh, last week, we moved on to the second part of that two, uh, series. I will, we, the key thing we took away is the actions of faith, which is, you know, when there's faith, there has to be an action. There will be an action that will demonstrate that faith and will back it up. You know, you believe God, then there's an action that will come from it. I will look through the scriptures. We saw Abel, and we saw Abraham, we saw Moses, and we saw Moses' parents, and we saw all the people that believed, and there was an action. Jo David believed that in the power of God, and that's why he confronted Goliath. There might be, have been other people in the camp that said, well, we believe that our God is greater than any other God of the Philistines, but they didn't take any action. There was nothing, there was no action of faith. And we, as people of God, we need to take actions of faith. It's better if you take little actions of faith consistently than not to take any action at all. And that is how God is going to, to, to make us people of great faith. Now today we're going a slightly different perspective because we have some things in Hebrews chapter 11 that we need to chew upon. And I want to take us to Hebrews chapter 11. And uh, I will start from place, uh, from verse Eight. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place that he should, after receive for inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whither he went. 
By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange land, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, and the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Now, look at, let's jump to verse 12. Uh, let's jump to verse 13. These all died in faith. Having not received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came, they came from out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But, they but now they desire a better country. That is a heavenly which wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he had prepared for them a city. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it is said in, that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. By faith, Jacob Blessed, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning the things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was a dying, blessed both of the sons of Jacob and worshipped, leaning on the top of his staff. By faith, Jacob, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three day, months of his parents. Because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment, by faith, Moses, when he was come to us, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming that the reproach, the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing who, him who is in, in, invisible. And now let's skip to verse... Um, verse 36. Others had a trial of cruel mockings and scourges, yea, moreover of a bounds and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sown in sunder. They were tempted. They were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskin and goatskin, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented, of whom the world is not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and in the caves of the earth. And these all having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Now, what, um, what, what jumps out here is that faith is not always rosy. Uh, it, faith, you know, there, think, there are some things about faith that really jump out here. And th that's the, those are the things we're going to look at today. Now, I'm going to speak on a number of things here, so I'm going to break it, try and break it down. I'm going to try and break it down into a number of points. First, the fate to lose. The fate to lose. Fate among Pentecostals today is all about winning. I'm believing God for a new car. I'm believing God for a new job. I'm believing God for a new wife, a wife or a husband. I'm believing God that God will make a millionaire before the end of this year. Everybody shout hallelujah, amen. You see, the common thing in all these statements I've just said is that this, that is faith to win. And faith to win is very exciting, you know. It's very aspirational. I'm going to get this and I'm going to get that. It's like a game and you feel, you feel, uh, you feel you're, you're, you're playing to win. Everybody likes to win, but there is a fate to lose. Look at here. Let's look. We're coming back to the book of Hebrews, but I would like to take us to the book of Ecclesiastes. And let's look at Ecclesiastes chapter 3. So the book of Ecclesiastes, the book of the preacher, chapter 3. And let's read from verse 1 and I think verse 6. Now Ecclesiastes chapter 3 from verse 1 and from verse 6. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 and verse 6. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose on earth in heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up. 
a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rent and a time to sow, a time to keep silent and a time to speak. You can see here a time to, in verse 6, a time to get. The mind, if you have a Bible that has a margin in it, that word get will have a margin note on top of it, a time to gain. There is a time to gain and there's a time to lose. There is a time when gain comes upon a person and there's a time when also that person will have to lose. And we look at, we go back to the book of Hebrews now, and we'll see how does that relate to what we've said. Isn't faith supposed to be something positive, something that if I have faith, I will always win? But let's look, you know, we read in from verse 8, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8, we saw Abraham, and we saw Abraham that he was called to go into a place that he should receive for inheritance, he obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whether he went. When we focus on the story of Abraham, many other times we focus on what he gained through faith. But we, didn't, we don't focus on, that, that's the end of the story, but we don't focus on the intermediate parts of the story that actually Abraham had faith to lose. The archaeologists tell us that the uh, civilization of all, the all of Chaldees was very advanced. You know, Abraham, you know, they've done some digging up, they've seen, you know, the types of uh, buildings that were there and the homes that were there, you know, what you call the state of the art architecture, you know, was a really buzzing city. Abraham probably had his own house. He had his own, you know, you know he, he, and he left all that going into nothing, going into nothingness. And imagine what people would have asked him as he was going, Abraham, where are you going? I do not know. Where are you going to live when you get there? I do not know. But you are leaving this mansion or this three-bedroom house behind. You're leaving, you know, these possessions that you've got over 75 years. You're leaving all that behind. Um, and you don't know where you are going. You see, Abraham had faith to lose everything that he had just because God called him and said, follow me, and I am going to make you something better. So that immediately begins to stand out here. Do, my brethren, do you have faith to lose? If God called any of us away from our security and our jobs, I call you to go into a wilderness. I maybe called you to full-time missions. Leave your job as a as a promising accountant, as a promising engineer, as a promising doctor. And the, the question that people ask is that: What did God tell you that you're going to do? You're going to be? Is He going to make to give you something better? And He said, No. God just said, I should follow Him and I should preach the gospel. I should be a missionary. People will count that person as the most foolish person alive. But that is it. People that follow with the faith of Abraham, they have a faith to lose. You know, thank God there have been some brethren in the church that have done costly restitutions. Sometimes it's to, to even the area of marriage. Maybe the woman is married to this man, the man is taking good care of her, the man might even be very rich. And uh, suddenly she hears the, the doctrine, she hears about the teaching of restitution that this is, I'm, I'm a wrongful person in this marriage. This man has married somebody before. I'm the second wife or his divorce. And I can't stay here. And the man will say, where are you going? Do you have somebody else to marry? Why are you leaving me? I do not have anybody else I'm going to marry. But God has called me and I have faith to lose. To lose what I have. To lose the house you've built for me. To lose the clothes that you've bought for me. To lose all the allowance that you're giving me, I have faith to lose. Or sometimes it's like somebody is in a wrongful job or wrongful occupation, making money in a wrongful way, and gets born again, and the person says, no, I'm resigning, I'm leaving this thing, and we say, brother, what are you going to do? I do not know, but my conscience, I cannot stay here. God has called me, he has made it clear to me, 
and I have faith to lose. Ultimately, all these people we're talking about will ultimately win, but in the beginning, that's not real, in the picture, it's not really in the picture. Even before God gives them anything, they have faith to lose what they are holding on to. You know, a sister said something one day, she was telling us about how she, when, when she nearly got born again, and um, how she used to have a lot of gold, you know, a lot of jewelry, a lot of things. And then suddenly she realized, I can't have all these things. No, this, it's not compatible with the type of person that God wants me to be. And she took everything, she went to go and throw it in the river, just threw it all away. The faith to lose, you know, something that is big, like Abraham, you know, house. Uh, security or whatever it's called. That's what we're looking at. And then when he went out, he sojourned in the land of promise. Now, he was living in tents. You know, Abraham did not have a house till he died. I don't know if you know that. Abraham, from the time that God called him, he was living in tents. That's it. And we also see there, look at it in verse 9. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise. God said, this is going to be your land, but not for a couple of hundred more years. As in a strange country, dwelling in the tabernacles, that's tents, temporary accommodation. Today we'll call it like, you know, caravans and mobile houses and, you know, just temporary, no, no, no brick and mortar. With Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Was it read down? Faith to lose. Let's look at another character here. Let's look at the same character before we actually leave it. Look at it in verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, when he was you know, tried, offered up Isaac. Faith to lose. He doesn't know how it's going to happen. He doesn't know how God is going to compensate him. But God says, I'm going to try you out. God didn't tell him it was a test. God just said, I want you to offer your son Isaac, your only son, Isaac, the one who I promised you that is going to be the, the heir of the promise. I want you to offer that same Isaac. I want you to offer him up to me. And then what happened is that he did it. When Abraham, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that received the promise offered up his only begotten son. If, when God has given you something and God says, give it back, by faith, can you lose what you have? Can you trust God with it? Of whom it is said in, in that in Isaac shall the seed be called. How was he able to do it? Because he accounted that God was able to raise him up. He accounted that God, he reckoned that if I do what God asked me to do, God has said it is this same Isaac that it, in, in him shall my seed be called. He's going to be the, 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 the one that will bring many descendants to me. Well, what if I give him up now? Well, he said, I know if God has said this, and God is saying this, God is able to resolve those two statements together. Accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence he also received him in a figure. When, when God said, don't kill Isaac anymore, I was just testing you, it was in a figure, in a type, in a way, he, God has raised Isaac up from the dead because as far as Abraham was concerned, he had given Isaac up. Isaac was dead. He had made up his mind. What God said is going to happen. Isaac was gone. He had detached himself from Isaac. Isaac was gone. And then God now brought him back. There are times when God will ask you to give up something. God may eventually give it back to you. But sometimes he wants to see, do you love the, the giver more than the gift? And he might ask you to give it up. I say, but God, you promised me that through this same thing, through this same job, through the same you know, person, through, through this and that, that I'm going to become a great nation. And God will say, yes, I know. It's still going to happen. But can you give it up? Now, let's move on. There's another character here that we need to look at. Faith to lose. In verse 23, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was he three... No, let's look at verse 24. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the presence of sin with the season. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, 
for he had respect unto the recompense of reward. That is another fate to lose. Moses left everything. He, he had position. He had you know, family, you know, royal family. He had connections. He had education. He had everything. He had status. And he left it for nothing. He just left it. And you ask Moses, why? For what? To become a shepherd? You know, how come? How is it going to happen? You see, Moses had faith to lose. No wonder he became the greatest person, the greatest figure in the Old Testament, you could say. But he had faith to lose. At that point when Moses lost it, he didn't have any guarantee that God was going to call him and make him, you know, the shepherd of Israel and make him the, the great leader. He thought, that is it. But he had faith to lose. You see, God does not disappoint the people that have faith to lose. As we read down, let's go to um, verse 36. Others are the trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sown asunder. All of these people had faith to lose. What were they losing? They were losing their freedom. They were, in, they were thrown into prison. They were losing their, you know, their well-being. They were, they were scourged. You know, they were losing their reputation in the society. They had cruel mockings. You know, they, were, they lost their life, even some of them. They were stoned to death. They were tempted. They were slain with the sword. They were wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins. They lost their comfort. You know, they lost any form of luxury that they had, and they became destitute, afflicted, and tormented. They wandered in the deserts and the mountains and the cave of there. They lost accommodation and settlement. They had faith to lose that. They had a choice. Everybody that's Everybody we're reading about, they had a choice. They could have decided, Abraham could have decided, I'm not going, until when you tell me, until when you go, you give me a guarantee that when I get there, I will have a house, when I get there, I'll have this, when I get there. You know, when you look at the story of Abraham, you even discover that it was when he went out, he lost everything, but I don't think he went out with uh, sheep and oxen. This is somebody who doesn't know where he's going, by the way. But what you see along the way, you just get to a point, you see Abraham was rich in cattle, was rich in this one. It was the things that God gave him along the way. It was the things that the Lord gave him along the way. Moses, the things that Moses eventually had the, uh, of the figure of being, the, being made into a figure of authority are things that God gave him along the way as he, as he had faith to lose. Also want to see, you know what, there's another thing we see in these characters that we're reading. Faith for the long term. Now, faith is interesting. Faith is exciting when it's in the short term. And you hear people saying, I believe in God for this, I believe in God for that. And you know, I'm believing God that before the end of this year, God will make me this and that. But what if it doesn't happen? Do you have faith for the long term? These characters all had faith for the long term. Abraham, I'll make you a great, of you a great nature, you have a child and so on. It wasn't, it wasn't tomorrow it happened. It was 25 years. But he had faith for the long term. And you know, as you read it, let's, let's see there. Let's go back to, uh, let's go back to uh, chapter there. So in from verse, um, for verse 9, by faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs of the same promise. Abraham for 25 years, and Isaac for his whole lifetime, then Jacob for his whole lifetime. Faith for the long term. For he looked for a city that, which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. It's not going to come tomorrow. It's for the long term. It's for, it's for the long term. God didn't give him that city that had foundations just immediately. My brethren, as we read these heroes of faith, what challenge are we getting? Joseph, for the long term, about more than 10 years, about 13 years in the prison, still having faith and holding on that the dream that God has given me will come to pass. Moses, for 40 years, having, still holding on and believing that God has not forgotten me in the backside of the desert. Sarah, Faith for the long term. And as you look at these heroes one after the other, how about David that we, we, we recently learned in our study scripture? 
look at the, from the time when God anointed him to the time when he eventually came to the throne. You know, look at all those years as part faith for the long term. People that don't have faith for the long term, they burn bright and they burn out. They burn very bright like a star. And, you know, you would love to be around there. They, they, will, they will raise everybody's faith up and say, brother, trust God, sister, trust God. This one. And after a while, they fizzle out. They don't, they've lost their brightness. And you still see them in the fellowship. You say, brother, but you are not the same as before. Yes, I hope that God will do it. You, you become like those disciples that Jesus met on the way, of, um, on the way to a mouse. That we thought that he would be the one that would bring salvation, deliverance, redemption to Israel. But since he died, we don't really know. We're despondent. Our, all our hope has died as well. Are you a type of person that your hope dies with the new year? As December is coming, your hope is dying because all the faith you had was that this year, this year, God must do this, 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 and this. You have faith for the long term. If it doesn't happen by December, is your faith in January a renewed faith that you can still trust and believe God? So all these people had faith for the long term. So it's the same references that we've read before, but you can add, you can add many things to, uh, to that. You, know, you can add the story of uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, you can add Moses on, you can add Joseph onto it. You know, you can add, um, you can add some other heroes that we're going to see here. So as you look here, you begin to see David, you can add David onto it, and um, some of all the other heroes of, and many heroes today, faith that stands for the long term, faith for the long term. Check up yourself, as I need to check on myself, do we have that faith? But as Jesus said, he said, if the son, when the Son of Man shall come, will he find faith on the earth? Will, will he still find you and find me watching with the same amount of faith that we had when we started off? That's a faith for the long term. Now, I'm also going to, we're also going to look at one thing here. There's something that we cannot miss here. There is faith that transcends a lifetime. It's a bit different to faith for the long term. Abraham waited for 25 years, it happened. Uh, Moses waited for 40 years, it happened. Joseph waited for about 30 years, it happened. Maybe uh, David waited for about 13, 14 years, it happened. But what if it doesn't happen in a lifetime? Are you still able to have faith that transcends a lifetime? That means that it goes beyond your lifetime. So it doesn't happen in your lifetime, but you still have faith. Now let's read it here. Look at, look at in um, chapter 11, now in verse 8, Abraham, for, for, by faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for inheritance from day, and he went out not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in the tab in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For look for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Look at from verse 12. Therefore sprang even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, as a sign which is by the sea, straw innumerable. Verse 13. Don't miss verse 13. It's very important. These all died in faith. That's the faith we're talking about, faith that transcends a lifetime. It hadn't happened at that, even at the point of death. If you saw people today, they would have thrown up their hands and they said, God, you promised it didn't happen. I, I lose faith. They lose their faith even at the point of death because they believe that since it hasn't happened at that, in their lifetime, then God is not faithful to his promise. But that's not correct. These all died in faith. They died still hoping. They died still trusting, not having received the promise. Are you like that? That if the promise has not yet happened, you are still able to carry on in faith. Even if necessary, you are willing to die in faith. When the time comes for you to die, and you say, God has said, I'm going to give you a land. I'm going to give you a nation. I'm going to give you this and that. These all died in faith not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off. There is a reason why this is put in the Bible for us by Beret. Hebrews chapter 11 is a chapter of challenge for us. So that 
in the Old Testament, they didn't have the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, they didn't have you know, Jesus speaking to them, the promises of Jesus Christ. They just had the promises of the, in the Old Testament. But these all, all of them, they died in faith. Now, we, we, the summary of the chapter is going to bring out that if this, they could do this, how much more us? These all died in faith, having not received the promises, but having seen them afar off. And they were persuaded of them. And they embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. But they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they would might have had opportunity to have returned. You see, God, these people, these set of people that were read about Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, God had promised them a country. Now, that country had its twofold. Number one, it's an earthly country, the land of Canaan. I will give you this land and it will become yours. They died in faith. As at the time they died, the land was not dead. There were still sojourners, there were still aliens, there were still foreigners in that land that God has promised them. And remember that Abraham has come out of his country for that, and he still died, it didn't happen. Isaac could have said, well, my father came out of all Chaldeans, and he died, and now I'm about to die, and it still hasn't happened. And Jacob as well, the same thing, and they died in faith. They died believing that one day it is going to happen. Are you like that? Do you believe? Can you believe to the point of that, that it is going to happen? And it will happen for you in Jesus' name. Because if it, even if it doesn't happen in your lifetime, it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. I, I read a story about um, somebody, a, a person, that had been faithfully praying for two friends who were unbelievers. Faithfully praying for them, God, bring them to the Lord, bring them to the Lord, bring them to the Lord, bring them to the Lord. And they never came. And this person grew old, kept on praying for these two people. Do you know it was at the funeral of this person that had spent a lifetime praying and never happened that these two people became born again? Now, if it's some people today, at the point of death, they'll say, God, you let me down. God doesn't let anybody down. God, it never happened. I've been praying and this person is getting harder. Maybe you are praying for your husband. Maybe you are praying for your child. And you're saying, it, but it's not happening. The person is even getting worse. I was doesn't want to hear anything about the Lord. You know, still hold on to faith. It can still happen. And it will happen in Jesus' name. You see, so they were persuaded of them. These all died in faith. Have, but these are far off. They saw them. Remember what we did at the beginning? We talked about faith and hope. Hope is what you see afar off with the eyes of faith. The eyes of faith you have today, you see hope afar off. And they were persuaded of them and embraced them. They held on to them. And they were, you know why they had to hold on to those things? Because there were things that were saying that wanted to tear those things away from them. I said, look, forget about it. Curse God and die. It's not going to happen. But they embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. For, and truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have an opportunity to That means that they, they burnt their bridges. That's exactly what you see in verse 15. They burnt the bridge so that there's no way to go back. Because when they go and get stuff, there's no way to go back. Burn bridges, would have heard this, about this story about uh, this general, I think it was Julius Caesar, or maybe it's Alexander the Great, I don't know which, which one it was, who said, you have to, when they crossed the Rubicon, he said, no, we're going to burn this bridge. And the, the soldiers crossed it into enemy territory, said, no, burn this bridge. And they said, why? Because when the, when the battle gets tough, there's nowhere to run to. We, we either fight, we fight and win, or we fight and die. But you know, people that maintain the bridge, you know, there's some people that come out of the land to where God calls them, and then the bridge is there that if they go and get stuff, they come to church and they leave that bridge. That if, if they go and get stuff here, I will go back. If after a while, if this hasn't happened, I don't have a child by this time, I don't have a wife by this time, I don't have a husband by this time, there's a bridge, there's a plan B. You know, some other people like that, you know what they do? When they get, they say they're born again, and they've made restitution. Then why are you keeping the bridge? You, you, you are keeping a reserved boyfriend or a reserved girlfriend, your, your, your future partner from before, your fiance from before. 
the number is still there. That, you know what you are doing indirectly? At, well, <laughs> this is a, if, if I, let me keep this, just in case, just in case, let me keep this one. We don't know what is going to happen. No, the men of faith, the women of faith that we're reading about, when you cross into God's territory, you burn the bridge. Because you know what? God will not let me down here. You see that? Even if I die here, I die in faith. There's no going back. You know, they were not mindful of the country from when they came out from. You do know the problem, my brethren of the Israelites, when they came out from Egypt, they were mindful of the country they came out from. That's the problem. They were mindful that there was a place, you know, that there was cucumber, there was lettuce, there was uh, this and that, garlic. They were mindful of the place they came out from. And that's why when the wilderness was tough, some of them said, oh boy, what are you looking at? See me, see, look my eye. Let's call a captain. If we say Moses, be our captain to take us back. That Moses is too, you know him, he's too, he's too straight line. So let's appoint a captain among us to take us back to Egypt. They were mindful of the country that they came out from. Are you mindful of the country that you came out from? For now, in verse 16, for now they desire a better country, which that is a heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called a God, for he had prepared for them a city. The Lord will not let you down in Jesus' name. Remember I said it's twofold. The country that God promises patriarchs, one part of it was a physical country. The other part was a heavenly country. And they, had, they, had, they got neither of them, even at the point of death, after trusting God for a lifetime. They didn't get the earthly one, and they didn't get the heavenly one, but they know they, they trusted God. And they desired a better country than the one they were coming out from, a heavenly. And God is not ashamed because he had prepared for them a place. You see, that word ashamed, it means to be, you know, to be shamed, ashamed, it means to be shamefaced. When it's like your, your child, you, your child, you promise something to your child, and, um, you know, your child is expecting, and you're coming home, and you, say, you just remember, I didn't get that thing, you know. And you quickly run to the shop. You say, I must get it. And then when you get home, you hide it in the bag, and the child is looking, mommy forgot, mommy forgot, mommy forgot. And then suddenly you bring it out. You are not ashamed because you promise you will get it, and you, you got it. And it says, wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called a God because he had prepared for them a city. If they get to that place and there's no city, then it's like, well, God might be ashamed, but God can never be ashamed. He will never let us down. So there's faith that transcends a lifetime. How about the next verse, Abraham and Isaac? That's faith that transcends a lifetime. God said, in this child will my seed be called. Even if this child dies, I have faith that transcends a lifetime. My faith is stronger than life and death. This child might die, but what God has said will not die. God's word will still come to pass. And look at from verse 20. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning the things to come. This is faith that transcends a lifetime. Isaac blessed them about things to come not, that were not going to happen in his lifetime. But he had faith about things that were not going to happen in his lifetime. And in verse 21, by faith, Jacob, when he was a dying, blessed both of the sons of Joseph and worshipped leaning on, upon the top of his staff. He, he blessed them about things that were not going to happen in his lifetime. He spoke, in fact, he spoke to all of his sons, not just the sons of Joseph. He spoke to all of them. He said, Joseph, you are, you know, you're a fruitful bar. You are going to be this. And, you know, uh, Judah, you know, unto, that, unto this shall the gathering of your people. Things that were not going to happen in his lifetime. He blessed, he did it by faith. Faith that transcends a lifetime. But in verse 22, by faith, Joseph, when he was, when he, when he died, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel I gave commandment concerning his bones, faith that transcends a lifetime. Joseph said, I'm dying here, we're in Egypt. Egypt is good for us. But one day, you are going to leave this place because God has promised us that promised land. When you go, don't leave my bones in Egypt. Take my bones with you. Now you say, well, what's, what's the problem with your bones? You are dead. Your bones, if your bones are in Egypt or your bones are in Canaan, it's, what's the difference? But it was a mark of faith. It was giving them like a stamp of faith. He says, one day you are going to leave. And therefore, let me give you commandment about my bones. It's not that he was concerned about the bones. But let me give you a commandment, like a, a testimony of faith, that you are going to leave here one day. When you are going, don't leave my bones here. 
That land that God promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, bury me in that place that you are going to. That is faith that transcends a lifetime. And you see here, let's see this before we round up. We look at it in verse, um, from verse 33 downwards. Who through faith subdue kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtain promises, stop the mouth of life. Everybody likes that type of faith. Faith to win. Through faith, I subdue this kingdom. I wrote righteousness. I obtained promise. I stopped the amount of lion. I do supernatural things that I can, you know, exciting things that I can write in my memoirs. Quench the violence of fire. Escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong. Wax failure in fight. Turn the fly, to fly the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Faith to win. Like the Shunammite woman, she received her child back to life again. Faith to win. And others were, but now look at the, twi this, the, 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 the twist in verse 35. This is the other side of the story that people don't like to talk about. Others were tortured. Faith to lose. Not accepting deliverance because of the conditions attached to that deliverance. It's not every single person that God delivered from the fire like Cedric, Mesach, and Abednego. It's not every single person that God delivered from uh, Herod's prison the night before they should be executed like uh, Peter. Others were taught, tortured. They not accepting the deliverance because of the conditions attached to the deliverance that they may obtain a better resurrection. Faith that transcends a lifetime is there. That they might obtain a better resurrection. They put their eyes on something. They, they, there's a hope. They cast their minds on something beyond the grave. My brethren, if there's one thing you are going to get from this series, is this. Please cast your mind on something beyond the grave. Because sometimes this word doesn't make sense. Do you realize, if you've read the book of Job before, the dilemma of Job, in a nutshell, is that life on earth does not make sense. Bad things happen to good people. Good things happen to bad people. You see, because the books are not fully balanced on earth. They're balanced in a way. Sometimes they're balanced, but sometimes like this. These people here, they know that they're going to have a better resurrection. At the end of the day, nobody can say God is unfair because God will balance the books. Everybody that has suffered, when they appear before God, God will wipe tears away from their eyes. He will wipe tears away from your eyes in Jesus' name. And then he will give you a better resurrection that you'll say, no matter what I've suffered, the compensation is a thousand times more than the suffering. So my brother, cast your mind. Don't put your, all your mind from, uh, from earth, from earth, from uh, birth to death. And don't, when you are looking horizontally, don't just look your timeline from birth to death. And then you look uh, vertically from this earth to the sky. Otherwise, life will not make sense. Ecclesiastes, that's the story of Ecclesiastes. A man who decided, I'm going to just do an experiment, look throughout the, the whole, from birth to death and from earth to sky. Not, nothing beyond the sun. That's what he's saying. Everything under the sun. Let's see, does it make sense? And his, his summary was, vanity of vanity, all is vanity. It doesn't make sense because the books are not fully balanced here. So you see somebody that is suffering. You see bombs being dropped on innocent people and you know, pe innocent people being slaughtered. Don't accuse God. God, why this? Because you think that life is, death is the end of everything. But some people have a better resurrection. God balances the books. He's the faithful judge who will make sure that the sinners will not go unpunished. Now, in verse 36, others had a trial of cruel mockings and scourgings. Yeah, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sown asunder, they were tempted, they were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented, of whom the world is not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and in caves of the earth. And these all obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God, having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. God is writing his annals, he's writing his, you know, chronicles of faith heroes. I saying, this is not the end. 
you know, there's no full stop here. It's continuing. God is saying, who am I going to add to this list? That's what we're reading at that last verse. All the Old Testament heroes, we can read about them and we are gobsmacked. We don't even know what to say because their faith is so awesome. They had much less than us and they did much more than us through faith. Our God is saying, no, them without us shall not be made perfect. These all obtained a good report through faith. Now, round up, you look at that word report. It, it, you, you, you go and study it on your own. You see it at the beginning of the chapter, and you see it at the end of the chapter. By faith, the others obtained a good report. And then it comes, you read down, it's telling us about what they did, and it's telling us that this is how they obtained a good report through faith. I link it back to chapter 10, because in chapter 10 it's saying, the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. We will not have a good report. Do you want a good report? If you want a good report through faith, then take all these examples to heart. These all haven't obtained a good report through faith. They received not the promise. The, the promise transcended their lifetime. The faith transcended their lifetime. So all the things they believed on are things that came in the New Testament. And so all the things we are believing on, we can believe it might happen tomorrow. We might believe, we might believe, and then it's for the long term. Or we might believe, does it, what if it transcends our lifetime? But the prayers and the belief that we have put it in place for the future generations. Are we still able to hold on to the Lord? I want us to take all this to the Lord in prayer, my brethren. What have you learned so far? What have you learned so far? What have you learned today? What did you learn last week? What did you learn the week before last week? Faith, the substance of things of war, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Like Abraham, are you able to come out of comfort? Are you able to come out of convenience? The archaeologists tell us that there was a great, great architecture in that place. All of Chaldees, they are unveiling, they are, they, are, they are digging up things and say, look, that, that place, they had things. And he came out, he was dwelling in the wilderness, in the desert, in tents. At no point did it cross his mind that I'm a fool. Why am I dwelling in tents? Am I going to dwell in tents all my life? Maybe you are like that. Are you dwelling in tents? So I don't have any permanent place of my own. Abraham dwelt in tents. But he had a promise. The promise that God has given you, my brethren, will come to pass. God is faithful. Who will do it? Believe. It will come soon. It doesn't come soon, keep on believing. All these people that we're reading, we're reading about, they didn't give up when it didn't come soon. So people are giving up now. As they say, well, pastor, it didn't happen in the last five years. 10 years, this is what they were telling us. It didn't happen. And now you are giving up. These heroes of faith, they are witnesses. The Bible said being, being surrounded by such a great crowd of witnesses, they are witnesses. We don't want them to witness against you. Say, look, my brother, you are giving up. After five years, and Abraham stands up to witness against you. I didn't give up after 25 years. And then Moses stands up to witness against you, my sister. I say, after 40 years, I can testify that God did not forget me. And Joseph stands up to testify against you, to witness against you that 13 years, I was still hoping God, that the dream that God gave me was going to come to pass. And then David stands up and says, let me say my own. What have you seen? I was anointed. The prophet said this one. I didn't say you are a liar somewhere. Why did you deceive me? From the day you anointed me, trouble started in my life. And you say, I'm going to be a king. King of where? King of the cave? King of the wilderness? King that doesn't have a house? Don't let these heroes of faith witness against us. Don't let Job stand up and witness. Now, what have you seen? That you are denying the Lord. 
I lost everything, but I said, my Redeemer lives. I know one day I will see him. Though worms eat my body in this flesh, I will see God. We have a great testimony against us, and the story is not yet finished. It's saying, who are the people who are going to take actions of faith? Who are they? You are they. I am, I am one of them. You are one of them. The people that are going to take actions of faith. Who are the people that are not going to consider? My brother, don't consider what you have lost. That's why you are depressed. My sister, you are depressed because you are considering what you have lost. But rather, consider what is left that you did not lose. You did not lose your mind, consider that one. You did not lose many things. God, res God reserved many things for you. You did not lose everything. God reserves something for you. Cons consider the ones that God has re reserved for you. I don't consider what you have lost. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you have taught us in this series of faith. And Lord, we're praying, oh Lord, as we've heard these things, Lord, in the time when doubt wants to arrive, like a, like a wave on the sea, like a storm on the sea, rocking our boat, by the time when people want to come and sow seeds of doubt in our minds, Lord, by the time when even our own body is saying, consider me, you are not getting younger. Consider me carefully. Lord, the grace not to, the grace to put our mind only on what you want us to put our mind on. And to have a faith, even when it's a faith to lose, when we, if we need to lose things, we need to lose job or convenience or anything to follow you, the faith that, that loses, the faith that de detaches itself from partners that you are saying, detach yourself from, I have some, something better for you. But you said, but I've been going with this person for five years, 10 years. If I pull out now, at my age, where am I going to get in that person? And God says, trust me, trust me. Lord, the grace to trust you in everything that we do, give unto us in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray you will give us a faith that will last for the long term. And Lord, this is, experience teaches us that when we have a faith for the long term, we don't even have to wait long. That's the paradox there. When you see that we have faith that, that, is, that has prepared itself, that if it, even if it doesn't happen this year, I will keep on waiting. If it doesn't happen in 10, I will keep on waiting. I will, I, I will not leave this God alone. I will keep on trusting him. When you see that type of faith, you, do, you act speedily. Lord, help us to have faith for the long term. That our faith will not die. And whoever's faith is dying, restore their faith in Jesus' name. And Lord, we're praying also. I have, give us a faith that transcends a lifetime. A faith to believe in you. That even the things you have not seen, the, the uh, mansions that are in heaven, and the reward that you are going to give us after we die, faith that has that. Well, if God does not reward me fully on earth, I know that He's still going to reward me. Give us faith that transcends our own lifetime in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, because believe in us.